What you're about to see are Perdix drones. These drones, designed by MIT, capture the eyes of the US military and are now being developed under that role. These new drones present a new type of unmanned aerial vehicle surveillance. These drones fly in swarms and use a collective mind to decide when a mission directed by the user has been completed. This allows the drones to keep going for extended periods of time while maintaining losses. These drones are harder to hit and cheaper than the conventional drones we are using now. So let's take a look and see what kind of advances this drone makes. In this clip, we can see how the drones move and what tasks they are performing. Each drone is marked by a green aeroplane and each task is a red dot. As you can see, after a few seconds, the drones move on to the new task. After this task is completed, they will wait a few more seconds and move on to the next. This allows the drones to be capable of completing tasks on their own without direct user input. This is similar in the way fire and forget missiles work on aircraft and other weapon systems. Once the person has fired the missile or munition, it automatically locks on to its next target or mission and completes it without the user having to put in any further input or maintain some sort of radar lock. Also, this means that the drones can be flown virtually without anyone there. They can complete the mission, return the data that they received, and then pass the information to the people who need it. The same idea can be applied to police forces, local, and or the FBI or CIA to collect information on our soil. These drones also create some new variables as to the ethics of use of drones. These new drones possess an AI-like system of communication, which raises the question, can these drones go and create their own mission? The important answer is no. As of right now, these drones require a planned out mission from the user. Another theoretical use is for these drones to be used as weapons. It is possible to arm these drones within a small explosive charge. How effective remains to be seen as that has never been tested. However, the main idea here is how accurate would it actually be? And would civilian casualties outweigh the actual effectiveness of the drone? And what does this mean for the civilian market? The question is will these drones be readily available? Or will they remain an exclusive drone for the US military to use? That is another question that remains to be answered. Although they are cheap, their potential capabilities could be dangerous in the wrong hands. Let's compare it to some other drones that the US military is currently using. This drone is a Raven. It's also meant for surveillance, but this is by a small unit yes. in the field. What this means is that the unit has to carry all the equipment necessary to operate this drone, as you can see here. Although this drone is arguably easier to deploy than the Perdix, it is hindered by the short flight time and relative slowness of the drone. The second drone we are going to compare is a T-Hawk. This drone is also meant for surveillance, but in a different way. This drone is better suited for disaster relief or EOD. The biggest drawback of the T-Hawk is its speed. Far slower than the Perdix and the Raven, it is more suited for a less threatening situation. The next drones we will compare the products to are larger and designed for a slightly different role, although they are still meant for surveillance. This is the Reaper. Designed for armed and unarmed surveillance and attack, this drone can be loaded out with missiles of different varieties and has a camera that can take pictures from high altitude. This drone operates like a fighter jet, or any other aircraft, although there is no pilot in it, as it is UAV. It is directly controlled by a user at a separate location from the aircraft. The Reaper can perform similar tasks to the Raven. It can take pictures and videos and send it to the people who need it, although there is a bit more time involved with the Reaper, as it is a conventionally sized aircraft. The last drone we will compare the Perdix to is the Global Hawk. 
This is a stark difference. The Global Hawk is a jet powered drone that is designed to fly at very, very high altitude and take extremely clear pictures in a similar way the SR-71 Blackbird was designed. This drone is by far the hardest drone to hit of what we covered, surely because of how high and fast it flies. In comparison to the weapons we encounter most in modern conflict. As stated before, the drone completes a similar task to the Perdix, surveillance. Although this type of surveillance is fairly, well, extremely different than the Perdix. The Perdix is designed to be a low level, high speed to look in an area. It is quite safe to say that out of the drones we've looked at, that the Perdix is by far the best at what it's designed to do. Needless to say, that's not necessarily a surprising thing, as it is designed for a specific task. But the point that I'm trying to drive across is that what we have now comes nothing close to what we're developing now instead of the 1990s or 2000s. The last subject we're going to cover in this video is the question what does this mean for the future? This drone possesses new AI development for the military and commercial market, and it presents a new type of warfare that provides possibly a less loss of life for both civilians and military personnel. What type of use will Perdix get from what we have now? Modern combat is constantly changing, and what comes next is ultimately the most important question of the entire video.